What's up guys, welcome back to the Educated Barfly. Today we are gonna be tackling the martini once again. But this time, instead of doing the historic martinis, we are going to be talking about, well sort of like, not only just like how to make martinis at home, but how to order martinis. There's so much confusion surrounding how to order a martini in a bar, I thought it would be fun to have just like a guide to the martini. All of the modern martinis that you'll find in a bar like the most likely ones. There's much to be said about ordering a martini at a bar, and like a few other classics, this drink really inspires some very, very strong opinions. Over the years that I have been bartending, there has been a lot of confusion around how to order a martini and what to expect when you ask for one from your local bartender. So we thought it would be nice to give you guys a video on a few different martini recipes to give you a guide for ordering them or trying them at home or both. The martini is one of my absolute favorite cocktails, and when you know how to get the one you want, there really is nothing quite like it. It is a drink approaching perfection. Guys, I wanna interrupt this video with just a short public service announcement about our partner, Trade. Trade is a coffee subscription service that helps you make some of the best, freshest tasting coffee at home because they partner up with some of the country's best craft roasters. Trade is super easy to use. All you have to do is go to drinktrade.com, fill out a short questionnaire, and they will provide you with coffee that meets your specs. Do you need it to be French press? Do you need it to be coarsely ground? Do you need it to be fine ground? Do you want espresso? They got you covered. And I don't just use Trade for my morning coffee. I also use it to make cocktails. I was recently hired by a company to make a menu featuring coffee cocktails and my Trade subscription came in super handy. So as a bonus, I'm gonna make you an extra cocktail in this video. I'm gonna show you how to make a variation on an espresso martini utilizing Irish whiskey and this cold brew that I made with my trade coffee. This is a super easy drink. First thing we're gonna do is half an ounce of Orgia, one ounce cold brew concentrate using my trade coffee, and two ounces of Irish whiskey. And then we're gonna give it a nice hard shake, eight to 10 seconds. And we'll give it a strain. And then we'll just garnish a couple, three coffee beans. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers $30 off their first order, plus free shipping if you just go to drinktrade.com slash barfly or click the link in the description below. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. How can you say no to that? There's a couple of things that I want to say before we get started. Gin and vermouths both contain proprietary blends of botanicals in their makeup, which makes them wildly different from brand to brand. This also makes it very exciting to experiment with them when you're figuring out martinis. Preferences, the spirits I use in this video are my preferences and I stand by them, but they are by no means set in stone or the only ones that work. You can use the gins and vermouths that you like. You really can't talk about the vodka martini without talking about whether to shake or stir your drink and all this is a very hot debate, it wasn't created by Ian Fleming or James Bond, even though they were the ones to make it the most popular. This argument goes way back into the early days of the martini. I'm not gonna get too deep into this issue in this video, but no matter what people say, shaking and stirring is largely preference. Shaking will give you a ton of front end dilution, and in my humble opinion, it will over dilute the drink, and also the aeration you get doesn't do a gin martini any justice. But this is exactly what some of the people are looking for. A very cold, very diluted drink. And if that's your preference, then that's okay. Another thing a lot of people don't really talk about is throwing martinis. Throwing is a technique where you add a drink with ice into some tins and then throw between those two tins. You don't get the massive front end dilution of shaking and you get the aeration that you won't get in stirring. You won't find many bars in the US using this technique, but many, many very well-respected ones in Europe do it, including the Connaught in London. Now, if you wanna shake your martini, but you wanna control the front end dilution, you can do so by shaking with a big rock of ice. The larger surface area of a single cube will give you a little bit of dilution, but it will give you that aeration that you might be looking for. And so this will be a little bit closer to throwing the cocktail. The first martini that we're gonna do today is a classic gin martini. This has a two to one build. And technically this drink, historically speaking, would have been a martini variation called a marguerite. But when you go into classic bars nowadays, this is the martini that you're usually gonna encounter. So first thing we're gonna do is two dashes of orange bitters, one ounce of dry vermouth, two ounces of London dry gin. Then we're just gonna add our ice. Add in some smaller cubes. And you wanna get a good amount of ice inside your mixing glass. And for those of you who are wondering about this, when you crack that first piece of ice, you actually wanna get those shards in. It's gonna help you get the proper dilution because when you stir, you get a really controlled amount of dilution over a longer period of time. And so that's why it's, it's easier to get a little more front end dilution. 
You want to always use a chilled glass so that you can keep it cold for as long as possible. And I usually prefer to do an orange peel and kind of bring the orange flavor back in here, but traditionally we're using lemon. We're gonna give it a nice lemon twist here, spritz it over the top like so. And you can just uh, drop the peel on top like so, or you can put it inside the glass if you like. Let's give this guy a taste. I mean, there's nothing better than a, just your traditional martini. And you have more dry vermouth than most people are used to. But I really think that the reason why people don't like dry vermouth is because most people don't know that you need to keep it in the fridge. And if you keep it in the fridge, you get fresher tasting vermouth and not so much the jet fuel taste that a lot of people don't like. You get all of the aromatics of the lemon, you get the botanicals in the sweet vermouth playing with the botanicals in the gin. It is very dry, it's a little bit sweet, and it's just a perfect cocktail. So when storing per vermouth properly, it tastes best within three months, although you can stretch that to six pretty comfortably and you won't notice a lot of difference or a ton of oxidization. After that, it gets a little bit dicey and you get some off flavors. There it is, the traditional martini. So the next cocktail that we're doing today is the classic dry martini. This is a martini with less dry vermouth, which seems to work against logic, but that's what it is. Two dashes of orange bitters, half an ounce of dry vermouth, and two and a half ounces of London dry gin. Add in our ice, strain it. And this one can be garnished with either an olive or a twist. We're gonna go for the traditional olive today. So put it on a pick. There you have it. Let's give it a taste. Oh, a lot of front end gin, all the botanicals of the gin, a little bit more heat. And then you get that dry vermouth on the back palate and it's just really nice. Uh, I like a dry martini. I prefer to have a two to one ratio. To me, it's just a little bit easier to drink. Uh, but this is really nice as well. And then you also get the residual juice from the olive. And so it gives it a little bit of a savoriness to it that's really pleasant. There it is, your traditional dry martini. The next martini up is the 5050 Martini, which was first published in Frank Newman's American Bar in 1904. And it was repopularized by the Pegu Club in New York City, where it is lovingly referred to as the Fitty Fitty. So first things first, we're gonna do one dash orange bitters. And for these orange bitters, we are using Fegans, which is a 50-50 split of Fee's orange bitters and Regan's orange bitters. One and a half ounces of dry vermouth. We're using Dolan. So for this particular martini with the, um, higher volume of dry vermouth, I like to use a heftier gin. We're gonna be using the Martin Miller's Westbourne gin. This is by no means the only gin you can use. We're gonna be doing ounce and a half. So with all of these, we're going to be stirring our cocktail. So we're just gonna be stirring, strain it. And then instead of doing a lemon twist, we're actually just gonna cut a lemon disc for this particular one in your lemon disc. And then we're just gonna express the oils on top and we're gonna float it inside. All right, let's give it a taste. What I really love about the Martin Miller gin is that it has a cucumber forwardness that's not as prevalent as something like Hendrix. It's sort of an undertone in there. You have all the botanicals of the gin on top of a nice citrusiness that really plays back into the lemon and then almost like a grapefruit bitterness to it and that plays so well with the dry vermouth. And so you just have this really nice bright martini. There it is, the 50-50. Next cocktail up is a perfect martini, which is a technique where you split the vermouth base with sweet vermouth and dry vermouth. This is a technique that is mainly used for Manhattans, but it works just as well for martinis. So one dash of orange bitters, half an ounce of sweet vermouth, half an ounce of dry vermouth, two ounces of your favorite gin. I got some larger pieces here. I'm gonna give it a strain. Lemon twist on this one as well. She's gonna go really nicely with that sweet vermouth. Let's give it a taste. Mm. The addition of that sweet vermouth really gives it an almost savory body that plays up 
the vermouth aspect, but in a, I don't know, I don't wanna say sweeter way, but it's like, it is, it is a little bit sweeter. It's a little savory sweet, uh, it has more body, it has a little bit more depth. It also accentuates the gin in a different way. The lemon oils really play to all of the botanicals inside both the gin and the two different vermouths, and it's just a lovely cocktail. So there it is, the perfect martini. So this is the point in the video where we begin getting into vodka martinis. Gin purists say that martinis should never be made with vodka. Vodka purists say that martinis should only be made with vodka, but whatever side of the aisle you are on, this cocktail is here to stay. When this cocktail was first created in the 1940s, it was called the Kangaroo Cocktail for unknown reasons. We are gonna be doing that historic version today because I think that is the best version of this drink. When you go to bars, you will find a lot of different iterations of this drink with a lot of different ratios, five to one, 10 to one, depending on what the preference of the drinker is. Usually the vodka martini drinkers like to go with little to no vermouth, but I just implore you guys to try this one. It's just one dash again of orange bitters. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth, two and a quarter ounces of vodka. Give it the old whirly twirl. The kangaroo, AKA the vodka martini. Let's take a sip. I mean, it's fantastic. It really is fantastic. But what this cocktail is all about is the ethanol from the vodka and really the only flavor component that you really have in there is the dry vermouth. So what you're getting is like this more alcoholized version of the dry vermouth. Of course you're getting, you know, whatever uh, olive juice was on the olive, which is just the right amount. And olive juice and dry vermouth go together really well. You get those botanicals and then you have the savory saltiness of the olive brine and it's just, it's fantastic. I know that there's a lot of people that don't like a vodka martini, but that's because those people may not have tasted this vodka martini. You can't really do a video on martinis without including a dirty martini. A dirty martini can be made with either gin or vodka. I actually prefer them with gin. Today, I'm gonna to be doing it with vodka just because that is the most common dirty martini that you're gonna find. So first things first, we're gonna do a half an ounce of olive brine. Next, a half an ounce of dry vermouth. Two ounces of vodka. And of course we strain an olive. All right, give it a taste. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a very dominantly olive brine. When you order most vodka dirty martinis, or dirty vodka martinis, that actually makes more sense. Dirty vodka martinis. But if you know, when you're drinking this drink or when you're when you're ordering this drink or when you're making it at home, feel free to dial up and down the, the, the olive brine. The olive brine can be very overpowering. And so some people really like the olive brine and they want, they kind of want it to be overbalanced. They want it to run over the dry vermouth. And so they want more. Uh, and some people want less and they want it a little bit more balanced with that dry vermouth. So really play with your specifications the same way that you will play with the specifications of your dry vermouth in this drink. There it is, the Dirty Vodka Martini. All right, guys, there it is, the Barfly Guide to Making and Ordering Martinis. I hope that this has been a little bit illuminating for you. And uh, now when you go to a bar, you can order a martini. Or when you're at home and you're making one, you can make a martini with more confidence. I will see you guys on another time.